Yeah, but the, level, the levels of his general play is so poor, and not just today. I think his general is laying stuff off, living uh, headers or whatever it might be in terms of front of goal. He's the best in the world, but for his general play, for such a player, it, it is so poor. Not just today. I think it. He has to improve that. He's almost like a League Two player. That's the way I look at him. His, his general player has to improve, and and it will do over the next few years. This being this brilliant striker is fantastic, but to, he has to improve his all-round game. Has well, to. In my eyes, Roy Keane is, for the most part, spot on in his assessment. Don't get me wrong. The whole League 2 comment is definitely hyperbolic in nature in order to garner attention from the public, but it's not a million miles away from the truth either. As Kino stated, Haaland is without a shadow of the doubt the best finisher on the planet. The bloke's 23 years old, already has 236 career goals to his name, and just came off the back of a treble winning season in which he bagged 52 across all competitions. Competitions. So I highly doubt he gives a fuck what critics think and will instead let his numbers do the talking. Not to mention it's only a matter of time before he finds his scoring boots again, at which point this discussion will die down entirely. However, there's no getting away from the fact that he's got plenty of work to do from a technical perspective. Obviously, Pep set his team up such that Haaland doesn't have to contribute an awful lot in terms of build up, and that's definitely a factor which explains why Haaland offers so little outside of goals, but the point still stands. Given how young Haaland is, there's most certainly room for improvement. For those of you old enough to remember Andy Cole in action, he's an example of someone who transformed themselves from an out and out goal scorer to a more well rounded number 9 who also created chances for others, and there's no reason Haaland can't do the same. While the big man was robbed of the Ballon d'Or last year, a part of me is honestly glad that a player in his mold didn't win it. Football's becoming far too robotic and mechanical for my liking, and Haaland's a prime example of this. His end product will always be second to none, but there's little to no flair in his actual game. This is precisely why Mbappe is for for me currently well clear of him in the pecking order of world class forwards. Even someone like a Harry Kane brings so much more to his team than just goals, and I can't even begin to imagine how devastating he would have been in Guardiola's system had that transfer actually gone through in 2021. Ironically, Haaland's best games for City came against Arsenal last year home and away. He was constantly dropping deep and making a nuisance of himself in midfield, and at times made it look like it was a man playing against boys. It's just a shame it hasn't happened more often. Some folk will say Keane's criticism stems from the fact that he's got beef with Haaland's father Alfie from their playing days, but I saw nothing to suggest that might be the case, especially considering he lavished praise on an aspect of his game that not a single soul can question. One thing Keane did forget to mention though, is Haaland's record in crunch fixtures. Yesterday wasn't the first time he completely ghosted against top tier opposition, and I'm afraid it won't be the last either. When you couple that with the fact Norway somehow always managed to bottle qualification for international tournaments, Haaland may very well go down as someone who couldn't shine when it mattered most, whether that's through performance at club level or inopportunity on the international stage. Do let me know where you stand down below folks. Haaland seems like a top lad, so I wish him nothing but the best, even though I believe the recent criticism of him has merit to it. Peace.